What up everybody, it's your boy Theo Pitts here. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube so you never miss any Run Your Race content. What up everybody, it's your boy Theo Pitts here with another episode of Run Your Race with my boy AJ Richardson who is not here. Uh, had his own little thing that he had to do. He's a businessman, so if he got something to do, you take care of that. But we have a very, very special guest here Three-time champ, uh, USA gold medalist. Uh, I miss nothing. Else. Oh, Grammy award nominee. Nominee. That I just found that out. That was mind blowing. Like we're gonna get into all that. But first and foremost, before we get to my guy Javale, first of all, Javale McGee, everybody, round of applause. Ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, let's go. But first and foremost, we got to talk to our fans. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that y'all have done for me, AJ, the support. Make sure y'all keep telling everybody, subscribe on YouTube, follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all that. Keep, spread the word, man. It's only getting bigger and better. And once again, we got a big time guest here who we about to get a whole lot of knowledge from, a whole bunch of stories, and it's going to be fun. So here we go. JaVale McGee. That, first and foremost, thank you for coming. For sure. Appreciate the invite, man. No problem. No problem. I mean, we had to get a three-time champ on here, you know, I USA it, gold man. medalist. Well, we got to have you on here. I appreciate it. But we're going to start as you, you've you seen a couple clips. You, mm -hmm. have, you We talked about a little bit. But what we talk about here on Run Your Race is pretty much we go from the start to now. Right. So we start from high school, uh, what the highs and lows. Then we go to college, then we go to the league, and we talk about your journey on the way through. Because as we've talked about here, um, and we've had multiple guests, the race for everybody is completely different. And uh, I think it's good for people to see it. Everything doesn't go smoothly along the way. And sure. I think that's uh, very important for us to get out there and for people to see that uh, you can be where you are. You can be a three-time champ. You can do whatever you want, whatever your mind, whatever you desire, you can do. So, JaVale, tell us about yourself. Where are you from? Um, um, born, born in Flint, Michigan. Uh, raised everywhere. Um, but yeah, born in Flint, Michigan. Mm -hmm. uh, your mom was a gold medalist. Mm -hmm. And she played, she was a- Is a gold medalist. Is a gold medalist. Once you get it, you no, just yeah. is. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. She is a gold medalist. Mm -hmm. So, you were just grown up. You grew up around sports from uh, the get go. So my mother played. Uh, my mother is a Hall of Fame basketball player, mm -hmm. literally, and she's in the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. So um, she played basketball her whole life. She went to. She won two national championships in college. She won. What college State she go to? University of Southern California, USC. Okay. Um, she had banners in there, pictures in the practice gym. Yeah, she's she's a big deal. A big deal over there on yeah. those parts. Um, she uh, she's won on every level actually. She's won in high school. I believe she won two state championships in high school. She mm -hmm. won. She went straight overseas after college. She played overseas, got some championships over there. Um, so I just been around the basket. I've been around the game um, my whole life. Yeah. Did you know you were gonna play basketball? No, I didn't. I didn't know I was gonna play. I wasn't one of those kids who were like, oh, he's a McDonald's All American or mm -hmm. he automatically going. I actually had like cousins and like really close people with me who were like top 20 in seventh grader. Really? Top 15, ninth grader, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And But I was never like the top. I was never that guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when, when was it that you, so we all talked about, we've had multiple guys talk about like, when we're young, we're just playing to have fun at For that sure. point. When did you take it serious? Like, okay, this is this is what I want to do. Like, did you play another sport? Did you do uh, anything else? I didn't play another sport. My sophomore year in high school, I played football in Michigan mm -hmm. um, only that year. But I didn't play thinking I was going to be a Were you great always player. damn tall? Always. I've never had a growth spurt in my life. I've always just been abnormally large. So middle school, life. you was what? Uh, what's middle school? What? what what is That's that? six to eight. Six, six to eight. Uh, probably like six foot at like 12. Okay. okay. Um, but like I was 11 pounds, 11 ounces when I was born. Jesus. So 
<laughs> just from that starting point alone, yeah. I was yeah, already okay. abnormally yeah. large. We got a pro. <laughs> um, <laughs> we got a pro. But yeah, I, I, but personally, I really didn't know. I really didn't know I was going to the league until I went to the league, to tell the truth. Like my sophomore year is when I was like, I'm going to take over this team and really lock in mm-hmm. and just try to be great at what I'm doing. Not saying I wasn't trying before, but yeah. the, the stars weren't lining up for me before. In high, in high school? In high school, no. No, they weren't lining up for me. I wouldn't say so. I went to five high schools. Um, wow. My, and, mm. and so, I mean, we can, to figure we, can it go out? Through the, we can go through the timeline, however you want to go through it. Talk about it. We got time. So my freshman year in high school, I was going to, uh, I was in Chicago. Um, I was going to my, my father stayed in Chicago. My mother, uh, my mother and father were never together, so I, mm. so it was our automatically separate households. Um, when my freshman year in high school, my mother got a job. We were staying in Chicago, but then my mother got a job uh, for the assistant coach of the Detroit Shock. Uh-huh. Um, and we, I, and I was going to a school called uh, I forgot the name of the school, but it was a public school, but like a upper echelon public school. This yeah. is my first time going to a public school where it was just like a whole bunch of rich kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was just like the energy was just crazy. And yeah. I was like, I love this. Yeah. Two weeks in, we move. <laughs> so I was pissed. Like, oh, Sick. I was having so much fun. It felt like college for real. Yeah. After going to college and looking mm-hmm. back on it, that freshman year in high school, those two weeks or four weeks, however long that was, it felt like college and it was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I had to pick up and leave. Um, and go to Detroit. My freshman and sophomore year, I went to Detroit Country Day, mm-hmm. um, which is that. a prominent basketball yeah. school. Chris Weber, Shane Battier, sure. a lot of people came out of there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was on JV both years. Um, it was guys ahead of me. And the crazy part is all the guys ahead of me didn't make it to the league. Really? Um, Did they go to college? Uh, yeah, they went to college, yeah. Oh, okay. But yeah, the league wasn't their final destination, I guess. Um, so freshman, sophomore year. So that's three. So that's two high schools already. Yep. Because I was there for two weeks. And then Detroit Country Day. Um, okay. First of all, I actually, that summer, I had committed to a school called Marion Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> that freshman year, actually. Oh, okay. No, no, no. I, I'll, I'll come back to that. But yeah, uh-huh. like I said, uh, I went to that school and then I went to Detroit Country Day for two years. And then my junior year, my mother was didn't like the fact that my coach at Country Day wouldn't pl- wouldn't put me on varsity or that I wasn't ready to go on varsity. Mm-hmm. So we made the decision. Well, not me. I don't want to say we ever. It's really her. She made yeah. all my decisions yeah. <laughs> up until I was grown. Hey, listen, enough she to got the track own. record to make and some she decisions. Had, and she knows you know she's talking about. She knows so she's talking about. I didn't know a damn thing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. So I yeah, couldn't yeah. be like, you're wrong. Yeah. So she was like, your junior year, you're going to go to this. I went to this little school in Fremont, Michigan. Um, mm-hmm. It was 40 students there. Um, it was a brand new school, uh, only all all white kids too. Um, my current mentor uh, was 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 a, he's like a billionaire or like high net worth millionaire, mm-hmm. and uh, he uh, he opened the school like he he opened it, yeah. and he wanted me to come there and just play and, and lock in. I think yeah. I was averaging like twenty five and <laughs> twelve and four blocks or something crazy. Yeah, um, I told you at this point. Uh, six eleven, six ten. Um, so, but my mother just wanted me to go somewhere where I can get the ball and get my confidence yeah, and yeah. grind and That's just play basketball yeah. without all the pressures of, oh, mm-hmm. you ain't doing this, you're going to the bench, you're going to the bench, yeah. whatever, whatever. So I did that, had a great season, whatever. And then after that, that summer, I was supposed to go to a school called Marion Catholic in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Um, but then my mother last minute was like, you're going to go to Hales Franciscan, which is an all boy Catholic school. Mm-hmm. But all boy black Catholic school, mm-hmm. but they have great basketball program. Yeah, she was like, so this will really propel you to be able to get a college education. She wasn't even talking about going to the league. I haven't, I didn't have no league conversations at that time at yeah. all. It wasn't nothing you about just, that. She but just she trying was to build like, your confidence. She was like, you're you six. She was like, you're six eleven. You're not gonna have a desk job. Like, yeah. <laughs> so you gotta lock in. And and we've had me and my mother have had conversations where. Where she's had to like, I've, she's seen me work out and practice, and then after, or she'll wake me up the next day at six a.m. and be like, "You're not working hard enough. Go outside, cold Michigan, put some Timberland boots on, and run around the school." 
Wow. Like, on some really, like, lock the fuck in type yeah. shit. This yeah. is what pros do. Like, yeah. if you want this to be your job. Just so, at a young age, I had that instilled in me from a pro. Like, she mm -hmm. was actually a pro. Sure. She actually played overseas and did all Did that. you feel like you had pressure to live up to her a little bit? You uh, know what I'm saying? That's, people always say that, but... I'm not that type of person who where I feel like you're comparing me to somewhere I need to do this, I need to do that. Yeah. I've always been the type of person to be in my own world For sure. and not really care what other people thought. For sure. It's, it's crazy you say that because I, I know my sister going to be like, the hell, Theo, but my sister is tall. Uh, she could have played if she wanted to, but she didn't want to play because she Just didn't. Just because she did. She did not want to be, A, compared to me, mm -hmm. or she saw how people, like, you know, in our profession, They'll love you, but they'll hate you and For shit sure. on you at the same time. For sure. She she knew she couldn't handle that part. She didn't like how people talked about yeah. bad about me, and she didn't want, want that, that for, herself. for herself. So I was like, it's crazy you say, because people have different perspectives. Like, For sure. Your mom is a star. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it had to be somewhat of a, well, you didn't really think about it like that. I didn't so really it think was, about it. I was that, just that, like, that was, this is normal. That's that was good mom. for you to have. Like, I never was the type of person that actually sat back, looked at the environment, and, like, started to look at the pressures, like, oh, no, mm -hmm. and started to get anxious and let that build up. Yeah. I was just like, mm -hmm. it is what it is. Yeah. I'm a very logical person. For sure. So, like, when stuff happens to me, I'm never like, why me? Like, why mm -hmm. did it happen to me? Mm -hmm. I'm more of, I try to think of things I could have did better, or was I not locked in? Was I not focused? Yeah. Like, I, I, I look with trying to figure before, out a solution yeah. before I start blaming other people. I feel that. Um. So, uh, what, where how many we schools at? we at? What, what, what huh? we at? Is that five or four? Uh, that's well. So the fifth one was that Marian Catholic that I had committed to going to in that summer yeah. before I went to Hell's Franciscan. So it's uh, it's the school in Chicago for two weeks, mm -hmm. Detroit Country Day for two years, Fremont, Michigan, then the one in the summer. I, I was playing the summer ball and everything yeah. with them, thinking I'm going there. And then last minute, <laughs> I went to Hell's Franciscan. So five high schools. So what year did you uh, graduate high school? Uh, oh, eight. Oh, no, eight. oh, six. Oh, it's oh, six. Oh, six. So it wasn't mixtapes and shit like that. Out like uh, that. no. So who was? I, I'll, I'll get to that. I'll get to that too of of a mixtape that actually. Okay, but continue. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh shit. I don't know what's coming, <laughs> but what is like? So this is crazy because on our other episodes with our guests, we talk about like, shit. You old, so we had some. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, oh, that. that hurt my feelings. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. Though. Like, I have like friends who are exactly my age, maybe even younger, and they're balding and all the things. Sure. I'm just like, For sure. why am I not? What bald? does balding have to do with getting older, though? That, that's an older, that happens to older people. What do you mean? Some people, unfortunately, go bald at like 20 in their I don't 20s. Think you being old has to do anything with being bald. What do you mean? How? Majority of bald people are old, unless it's. Bro, uh, my dad, dude, my dad literally cut his hair. And went bald because he was tired of paying for haircuts. I get that, but that was the Michael Jordan era where everybody wanted to be like Mike. <laughs> like, right. It was really an era that don't where, mean they old, for example, Jada Kiss. Like he has a perfect hairline. <laughs> Why was he bald that whole time? You ever think about that? Uh, hey, listen, hey, it'd be like Mike. That's I guess. crazy. Yeah. Shit. All right, so mixtapes. Okay, so yeah, let's, pretty let's, much, let's, pretty much, in 06, we watch the street volume. For sure. We watch the street, yeah, and one. Yeah, that's all we watch oh at, at that point. Amazing. So, who's your, who was the guy that you were watching? Like, yeah. There were no big men in the end when mixtape except Escalade, and I wasn't. And Baby Shaq. He no, was no, not Baby, Baby Shaq. Shaq. Uh, he what, was only 6'5. What, what was the big dude? Escalade. That was another one. His name is, you talking about the big dude, Escalade? Might have been that. It wasn't no big guys. It was N one. They were that's dribbling. True. And, true. He had Pat though. But that's it though. Yeah. Like that's it. Yeah. I wasn't Literally, he wasn't get up and put my game. I yeah, was athletic. Sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I wasn't putting my game out there. For escalate. sure. For sure. Um go ahead and talk about your mixtape story. Go ahead. I'm not there yet. I'm not there. Yet. It's <laughs> it's right. It, my mixtape story, so you can plug it into the timeline. Okay. It's right before I get drafted. So. Okay. Um, so where are we at right now? So right now we at the end of Gradu high school. I graduated in 06. Before we get there, before uh -huh. we get to graduation and we're going to talk about recruiting, yeah, how right, all right, that right, went, blah, right, blah. Right. So before we get to all that, what was a low point where, not a low point, but like a switch that, for example, 
I, and AJ teased me about this shit all the time. I was like number two in the nation, number one in the nation. I went to USA and got cut. Mm -hmm. Didn't make the team. That was a light bulb went off like, hey, look, you got to come with it and if, if you want to be in that type of level and get where you want to go. Where, what happened to you throughout your high school journey were like, okay, I really got to lock in. What's at the time? She was like, you ain't working hard enough. Go run around the damn yeah, school. You know what's crazy? You know what's crazy? And I, I think about it later now, and I think I would have been five times the player I am if I would have knew this. Mm -hmm. I didn't find out I had asthma until my second year in the NBA. Wow. So. Wow. I'm going through conditioning tests in college, <laughs> doing everything that everybody else is doing, thinking they're working harder than me and everything, yeah. and just like, why the hell I can't make the conditioning yeah. tests? Why am I dying? Like, it just yeah, doesn't I make am, sense getting tired the first yeah. three minutes of the game. For sure. I might need to like, get checked out. I'm locked in. I'm like, I'm working out. Yeah. I'm in here early. Yeah. Like, so I didn't know. So if I would have got 10 years old, oh, your son has asthma. He's an inhaler. Like, you would, yeah. Life's, I mean, like my career could have went a total different trajectory, mm -hmm. even though I'm yeah. 15 years in. Yeah, you, which is a, you're doing all right. The average is three to four. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, you're doing all right. I've already you that. beat that, but still, yeah. you get what I'm saying? But uh, but so senior year, after senior year, or recruitment? So, yeah, what was that? So it was, okay, so, yeah. so after my senior year, after my mm -hmm. senior year, uh, at Hills, oh, what was a low point? That's what we're yeah, at. Yeah, low point. What is a low point like, in my career? Um, when in high school, yeah, I don't think I had one really. I was, okay. I promise you, bro. Like I was such a, I'm such a person. Like if I know good people are behind me and telling me what to do, when they tell me what to do, I just lock in and do it and mm -hmm. don't ask no questions. Like I've always been that person. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I had a, a, a strong woman behind me for who sure. Knew her for actual sure. shit in basketball, because I I didn't know. Like I did not know. Shout out to Miss McGee. Shout out to Big Pam. You already know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I didn't know. So like going to college and and she she's the one who told me you going to college. Yeah. Like I wasn't thirteen years old. Like you yeah. know what? I'm going to college. Mm -hmm. When I what'd you call it? It wasn't mm -hmm. uh, you, you going to college. Just living life yeah, though. Yeah. You get it's, what I'm saying? Exactly. It's like yeah. it's not like oh I got to fight to live about college. She had that pressure on her back to make sure her son goes to put college you in the right. and put and she puts her kids in the right position. So mm -hmm. I really did. So she took all the pressure off my back to let me at least have a good childhood. Got you. Not know the struggles we're going through. Not knowing what we really need. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So when did uh, recruiting start for you? Recruiting started for me, uh, I would say junior year in high school. Mm. Um, did you play on the circuit? Did you play like AAU ball? I did. I played for uh, I played for a couple of the big teams in like Chicago, but I wouldn't play. Mm. So my mama took me off of them teams. <laughs> <laughs> just, you ain't gonna play my baby then. Yeah, hey, what's the point? Just go see, so, so I would go to like the smaller teams and then actually mm. play and play mm. well and just keep my confidence. Where'd you up. blow up? Uh, I didn't really blow up. That's the crazy part. I didn't, I never had a blow up. I never had a McDonald's all American camp. I never had none of that. You know what I'm saying? So I never had those experiences. I never had those experiences. Oh, I'm, I'm the top five player. I'm hanging out with the number There's four kids, player. You don't have to be McDonald's all American top have five to, to have a 15 have year to. career, For sure. three time champion and a USA gold medalist. Yeah. You don't really, have to you just really got to lock in, and of course you got to be lucky for sure. For don't sure. don't don't get it messed up. For it's sure. just a lot of seven work. footers out here in this world, work, and I sure. see them walking around all the time, and they didn't they don't have a lick of skill in basketball. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 luck also. For sure. Um, but all the if you put it into work, the 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 luck will align with the hard work, and it it'll just come out the way it's supposed to come out. For sure. So how did recruiting go for you? Uh, recruiting wasn't really that crazy for me. Like I had a couple colleges, but it was more uh, mid majors mm -hmm. saying they wanted me. But most of them were in the Midwest or on the East Coast, and I, I picked immediately that I wanted to go as far west as possible <laughs> <laughs> and as far away from home as possible. Just because I was always under my mother, like so always, everybody where you went. Uh, what like what what school college? I went to? Yeah. I went to University of Nevada Reno. Mm -hmm. Um, and what made you Wolf choose? Back. Uh, Jesus. What made me go? That, what that made, reminds me of NC State. <laughs> don't say that shit. Oh my God. What made me? What made me go over there is I, uh, I only visited two schools too. I mm -hmm. visited, uh, I believe it was uh, San Francisco University, um, and then it was Nevada. 
I think Nevada was my second win. I think my mother came with me and she saw the campus. I saw the campus and we just looked at each other. I was like, I think this one was it. But we really didn't have anything to compare it to. For real. Yeah. So yeah. now that I think about it, like I should have <laughs> went on some more business. <laughs> like, hey, listen. But at I, the same time, I feel that. 15 year, year career, three time gold, yeah, three time sure. uh, champion, yeah, one time sure. gold medalist. So it's like, did everything work out the way it was supposed to work out? For you know sure. Bro. You can't be greedy. You I only went on. I went on. I went on a lot of visits, but yeah. I only went on two officials. Yeah, just two. Um, so I had other schools interested. I had USC interested. They wanted me to red shirt, though. I had a couple of other like mm. D one major programs, but they all wanted me to red shirt. Yeah. And in my mind, I'm like, I want to play basketball. Like, mm. I, like I know I'm not gonna have fun if I'm there just working out so, yeah. and just going to practice. And I'm not, I'm not gonna stay locked in. Nah, like yeah, something nah. else is gonna happen to For where sure. it's gonna alter something mm-hmm. else. So I'm just like, I need to be locked in on basketball. I need to be going to practice, going back to my dorm, going to sleep. Go mm-hmm. to practice, going back to my dorm, going to sleep. I need For that sure. type of focus. For sure. Um, so I decided Nevada, um, mainly because I wanted to go as far west and that was like the main school who was telling me like, you'll play a lot, you're freshman year, um, you'll, uh, you're as far west as possible. Yeah. And I was trying to get away from the snow also, but <laughs> it snows in, in Nevada. Yeah. At Nevada, I didn't know up that. there. I don't think so, you got away from it. So I didn't get away from it at all. Yeah. So that was, but it was, it was, I feel like it was definitely meant to be. For sure. Um, so I ended up at Nevada. Uh, my freshman year, I only played 10 minutes a game. Mm. Um, didn't play as much as I wanted to, obviously. Um, that but, conditioning. Huh? That conditioning toughened. <laughs> so we used to that have these things. Year. We used to have these things. Yeah, my first year. So we used to have these things called 24s. Mm. 24s are, you have to go down and back 24 times in a certain time. I don't know what the time is, but like a minute mm. rest in between. Yeah. But it's 24, 20, 16, 8, 4, 2. Yep. And you had to make them every Sunday until training cap. So, so if you made it, if you made it the first Sunday, you don't got to do it no more. I didn't make it the first Sunday. Didn't make it the second Sunday. Didn't make it the third Sunday. Didn't make it the fourth Sunday. Made it the last Sunday finally. Uh, but I had like my teammates helping me. Like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, like it's yeah. a Rocky story or something. Yeah, literally. Not knowing I have asthma. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I might die out <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah, maybe. Um, maybe. <laughs> well, check on that. <laughs> Maybe I should check on that. But uh, but yeah. So so um, so I made that. Uh, and I'm playing whatever. I only played ten minutes a game that season. The guy in front of me, or the guy who was getting the ball, Nick Fazekas, who was a co. He's like, yeah. He was like Dirk. Yes. Uh, at my school, yes. like he, he could shoot. Yes. He couldn't jump. He couldn't run, but mm-hmm. he could shoot that thing. Mm-hmm. He couldn't so so Nick couldn't shoot, he couldn't run, but he could score that thing. So he yeah. was ahead of me and uh and I didn't play a lot, I played ten minutes a game. But once he graduated, well I was also on the team with Ramon Sessions mm. and Ramon left his junior year. Um that summer, I looked around and I was just like, Who else is it gonna be besides me? Like yeah. there's no number one star crew recruits. Time. It's my time to go hard. Mm. So and, and in college, I was always locked in to to like the grind of and I, I didn't really have distractions outside, like to where like Christmas breaks and all the breaks we had, I stayed in college. I never went home. I like once. Bro, I went home probably three, four times. I never yes. went. Yeah. Never went. And I never had like, oh, I'm homesick. I never had that oh, feeling. Yeah. I was enjoying college. I <laughs> loved sure. college. I for loved sure. being alone. I loved doing what I wanted yeah, to do. Yeah, I for loved sure. it. For sure. Um, so that summer, uh, after my freshman year, I was locked in. I was 6 a.m. workouts in the summer, summer school, mm-hmm. uh, making sure I'm locked in. We And we had like a football weight training coach too. So, oh, and I go. think I'm like 6'11", 225, 230. <laughs> I'm skinny. Yeah. So I'm just grinding that whole summer, whatever, whatever. And then my sophomore year, I, uh, it's time to start the sophomore year. And I, I, like I said, I look around and I'm like, I got to shoot every ball. I got to like do it. Like this yeah. is my team now. Yeah. And I made that decision and, and I had a great season that year. Um, about, about 
close to like when the tournament starts to start the end of the season, I started like really scoring and and I shot threes in college. I everything. I shot I think I shot like thirty eight percent from the from the three. You was going crazy. I was going crazy for sure. Coach was like really running offensive plays. That's why I say like people were saying like, oh, Dwight Howard is out there scoring thirty eight yeah. percent. I'm like, if y'all don't know, like it's a lot of people in the league y'all think are just rim run bigs or stuff like that who will Do go out there more. and kill also yeah. Yeah. with the ultimate green light yeah but that's not their role on, uh-huh. on the team um but yeah so so i killed uh that year and that and like you like you said when i found out i was going to when i figured out i might be going to the league was like the middle of my sophomore year okay it wasn't like i got to college and i'm like i'm going to the league yeah, dude. yeah i had other teammates like yeah i'm going to the league going to the league but i'm a very yeah. realistic person you're like a really logical person yeah. i know the numbers of guys <laughs> that go to the league and visually i'm like most McDonald's All Americans go to the league. Mm-hmm. Guys that are at the top programs go mm-hmm. to the league. Yeah. It's very rare that then you got foreign, foreign guys, foreign guys overseas coming going on to the league. I'm just yeah. like, it's very rare the guys from mid major from Nevada just go to the league. <laughs> <laughs> First round, blah blah blah. blah. But I was like, hey, I, I'm a, I'm gonna try my hardest. Yeah, you know what I'm for saying? sure. So, what was yeah. your welcome to uh, college moment? Uh, like, get dunked on. Or something like that. I didn't really have those for real. Like I was, I, I think I was like two point eight blocks in college. So motherfuckers, motherfuckers weren't dunking on me like no, that. No, I, I, I believe you. <laughs> I, I definitely believe you. They weren't dunking. So on you me didn't like have that. nothing like a game. Like all right, this college shit real. No, I didn't. Oh, uh, actually, playing North Carolina. Playing North Carolina. We played <laughs> North Carolina. So. <laughs> we played North Carolina. Uh, yeah, welcome to college, big and fella. That's, but it wasn't that, ass though. Whooped. We did get our ass whooped, but yep. I had a great game. And you that don't give game, a damn. that's the game that put me on the radar, low key. We put everybody on the radar. That's the game that put me on the radar. Because you know why? Because the scouts are there watching. For sure. They there watching, and they saw me busting y'all ass by myself. We lost. Who's don't on get that? me wrong. 06? I was right after the chip. Yeah, no, it wasn't 06 though. It was it was no, 2000. No, 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 I'm tripping. It was 2007, I believe. Seven. It was 2007. I don't think we were that good that year. I don't, I don't know how y'all were. Um, I don't think we were that good that year. Shit. No, it wasn't even 2007. It was 2008. Yeah, because oh, was, that's championship year. Yeah, 2008. That means we definitely waxed that ass. Yeah, y'all beat our ass for sure. Yeah, but I had so, a good game. No, that's that's and, fine with me. And that got me on the which column? on the path I need to go. Hey, listen, shout out you to us. Saying? Y'all helped my man Vail get to the league. Uh, got him on the radar, but <laughs> he took that fat ale home. Hey, it wasn't meant to be anyway. <laughs> Y'all make the to. tournament that year? Uh, hell no. My sophomore year? <laughs> hell no. We did not make the tournament. We ended up in like the CI. What, what, remember it was a new tournament that they made? They made a new tournament? It was a new tournament they made. It had the NIL. I mean, not the NIL. <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, they had the NCAA, then they didn't have the uh, yeah, NIT. The NIT. And it was another tournament that they had just started, right? And you know, like, what, what's some, book, some BS about that? Your your coach, they ask y'all if y'all want to play. Why did he agree to that? Because it's exposure. I mean, you could still be playing. You're right. Yeah, you want to, you want right. to, well, why did they agree to go to the, what? The tournament the, y'all Because th- th- we didn't make the first two. So it was just like. Let's get some we'll post some, uh, yeah. season games. Experience. But we lost to Houston in the first round. <laughs> <laughs> so we like, clearly we're not good. All right. But in my mind, I'm like, well. Sayonara. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm going to the league. So, but I didn't know. But like I said, I didn't know until like after that North Carolina game, I started seeing my names on the draft boards. Mm-hmm. I'm like, Oh, I might actually go to the league. It's crazy. First round, too. That thing was in like the 13, Ooh. 20 area. I'm like, oh, no, I got to go harder. Yeah. Oh, that, just, <laughs> that just made me go harder. Yeah, you know what, what I'm saying? And, and in college, I wasn't uh-huh. like a, a, I never drunk in college. None of that. I used mm. to go to parties, have a, play Gatorade Pong. They would be drinking beer, but yeah. I'd be having Gatorade in my cups. Yeah. You know what I'm I saying? I don't drink beer. So I ain't uh, never played But no I was just pong. always like really locked in on like my body and things like that. I feel that. Well, um, that helped you. For sure. So, Middle sophomore year, Carolina helps you get to the league. I'm keep, I'm gonna keep, keep saying, I'm gonna keep that, saying that. Stop saying that. I'm gonna keep say, first of all, we play clips here. I want to see a couple clips. Me of busting their ass. Bell getting buckets against Carolina. Buckets. I don't believe it. I want to be see it because that means T Hands was there. Tyler Hansborough. 08. What that mean? Deion Thompson. What that mean? 
Pros. Means nothing. Y'all won. Don't get yeah. me wrong. <laughs> And my mama had a pep talk with me before that game too. Listen, she called me. This is the game right here. That's everybody Hayes, gets. Bro. He ain't. He ain't shit. He ain't out here doing nothing. Yeah, everybody man, get that pep shit. talk. Blah blah whoa, whoa. I mean, Everybody gets that man, pep talk. That yeah. game, I tell you that. It was yeah. a team effort. I'll yeah. Tell you that. <laughs> it was a team. Effort. I feel you. So you tell the coach Sayonara, I'm going to the league for right? sure. For sure. So how did the draft process go for you? Uh, draft parts is cool. Um, let me work out. You do. I don't remember how many. I think I did like ten or something, nine or ten, maybe. I don't remember how many I did. Um, you got a promise? I, I did. I got a promise from Washington, and once yeah. I got that promise, I was like, I'm not working out anymore. Yeah. What are we doing? Um, but at the same time, I had had like a bad memory mm. of guys going to the draft mm. and and not thinking they had chosen. the promise. Not yeah. getting the promise and not getting chosen and yeah. crying yeah. and blah, blah, blah. So mm -hmm. I had like a scar in my mind. I was like, I'm not going to the draft. Yeah. So I didn't go to the draft. Wow. Yeah, I didn't go. Was, I was Washington your best, best workout? Uh, I don't think so. No, I don't think Washington was my best workout. I'm going to be honest with you, bro. We've had a lot of, a couple of people on here. It tends to work out like that. Yeah, because like, they, they know if they want you, they know the bro, tangibles. We had two people on here. They didn't even work out for the team. They didn't even talk to them. Yeah. Got drafted. You played with them. Both of them. Who? Well, actually, Cam got drafted mm -hmm. by them. But Mikael never talked to the son. Never talked they to him, never worked out for They didn't him. watch millions of, of That's true, hours though. of film on you. At least talk to me. They didn't, talk, they didn't talk to your psychiatrist. They didn't talk to your grandma. For sure. They didn't talk to your elementary school teacher to see if you had any threats when you was that at yes. that age. Like, but they do a lot of background They do checks. a lot of, listen, the background checks is crazy. You went to jail for petty theft of some Starburst. They gone, bro. They know yeah, that. Yeah, they, they definitely don't know about the Starburst. But it's still mind boggling to me. Like, you're not going to call me not one time during the draft process, but like, hey, what's up? Nothing. That's wild to me. I guess. That's wild, but hey, guess. look, he's good now. He's he living now, <laughs> I tell you that. Um, so, and then you were pick what? 18th. Pick 18. Ha! Ah, close to lottery. To, to the Washington but Wizards. didn't get it. Yeah. Sayonara. Not Sorry, not close enough. buddy. <laughs> but, <laughs> not uh, close enough. But yeah, to the Washington Wizards. Washington Wizards. So... That night, Mama McGee lit. I'm actually in uh I'm in Key West. Mm -hmm. I decided in less in, in, to not go to the draft and then just go to Key West and enjoy the vacation wow. while the draft is going on. Wow, that is smart, actually. Yeah, I was smart. Yeah. Well, I'll be at the draft. Where's the draft at at this point? New York. It's in Oh, okay. It's cold. For a while yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It definitely wasn't COVID back then. No, no, not at all. <laughs> So you you're in Key West. How did how did it all happen? Like you just sitting there on the couch um, with your mom? Yeah, I'm sitting there watching the draft. Uh see call. Um yeah, they called me. Yep. They called me right before I think on the 17th pick, they called me. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the Washington Wizards, blah, blah. blah. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I appreciate it. Thank you, blah, blah. You cry. Cool. Uh yeah, definitely cried. Me and my mama cried. Yep. We was just like, my mom was out there with me too in Key West. No, for sure. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Mama gotta um, be there. Gotta be there. She did the, she and made we the just foundation. Like, I was just like, Mom, we made it. Like all the hard work you put in, we made it. That's tough. Yeah, we made it. It was That's like tough. a real play the clip. Oh, yeah. we don't got the clip. He in Key West. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is before iPhones too. Yeah, right? for I sure. I think iPhones just came out. Yeah, I definitely didn't have one for yet. sure. And they, they were like the size of this. Oh my bricks! Those are terrible. Heavy bricks yeah, that made of it's aluminum. It's like the the way iPhones look now. The fact that we use those is was, crazy. It's crazy. It's the, I mean. The fact that they're as big as they are now, yes. we're cool with it. No, it's kind of sure. crazy. For sure. Because they were a lot smaller. A lot smaller. And especially for you, you seven foot. They used to be huge in my hands. Holding a pallet. Is that, it's crazy. Trying to text on an iPhone. Yeah. Four. <laughs> Serious. All right. So you get drafted by Washington. You got to yeah. leave Key West because you got to get to Washington. For sure, but I don't think I. I think they were like, "We need you here tonight," and I was like, eh, "That's not gonna work." Yeah. Uh, I'm currently out of the country. Yeah, uh, but I think I was there like two days later, oh, and God. then yeah, and then it was. Who came in with you? Uh, to what do you mean, like my draft? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm I'm the uh, only one. What do you mean, only one? No, I'm saying like. 
Oh, in, saying, like, into Washington? Who was also yeah. drafted in Washington? I think it was, I was the only one. Yeah, I was the only rookie on, on the team. Oh, okay. And I didn't really have no rookie hazing like that, for real. My only mm-hmm. rookie hazing thing was uh, get Karan Butler two cheeseburgers and a handful of straws uh, before every real game. Y'all didn't make the playoffs that year, did y'all? Hell no. Yeah. Eating cheeseburgers, you trying to win? But that was his, before was his I got thing, there, that was Buckle, Let's go and put it out there. No disrespect, he was a bucket. I ain't, For gonna, sure. I ain't gonna do that, but. For sure, but he really used to make me get a handful of straws. He used to be crazy. They used to look at me crazy walking out of McDonald's. A seven foot guy just walking in, can I get two cheeseburgers and grabbing a handful of straws? Literally a handful. Not like, just grab me five, a handful. Who's on that Wizards team when um, you first got there? Antoine Jameson, Sean Stevenson. Carolina guy, uh, uh, Antoine. Um, Gilbert Arenas, Nick Young, Andre Blatch. Uh, yeah, I mean that's a lot. Just Y'all had that. some names. Yeah, we definitely Y'all had did. some go getters. We did. We just did. Didn't mesh. It's, it, no, Gil was hurt that year. Gil oh, was okay. hurt. He wasn't a hundred. It was. Oh, okay. It was. It was. It, he he was injured, so I didn't get to experience the Gil that everybody else is. That everybody else got to experience. Got you. Got you. So you get to the league, rookie. What was your welcome to the NBA moment? <sighs> My welcome to the NBA moment was. Horrible. I hated it just because we were in where were we at? I don't think you should like it. No, but like we were, I had Eddie Jordan as my head coach, Eddie mm-hmm. Jordan. And I don't think Eddie Jordan liked uh, Etan Thomas, mm-hmm. who was a five ahead of me. Um, okay. And Brendan Haywood also okay. was ahead of me. Okay. But he broke, I think, his hand, his finger or something. Mm-hmm. So then that propelled me to starting center mm-hmm. as a rookie. And I think we went 0-10. We lost the first 10 games. Eddie Jordan fired. Gone. Then Eddie Tapscott comes in, who was like a player personnel guy, and then they assigned him as the first, as the head coach. He don't like rookies. The end of the <laughs> bench. <laughs> I'm just like... What's, what what's going happened? on? What just yeah, happened? I'm trying to figure this and, all out. And, and that was my coming to the league moment to where I was just like, oh, no, this ain't it. Like, yeah. damn. You like, wasn't having fun. You really can just, I wasn't having fun after that yeah. at all. Like, just working out, knowing I'm not going to play. It wasn't, as a rookie, like, you're like, oh, the NBA, you're how I old think I'm, a, I'm, I think I'm 20. Turning 21 in January, yeah. yeah. So, because at that point, you like, especially you start. Yeah, I was, I'm thinking like, oh, dang, like. I get to work through this. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then, then next thing you know, Mm-mm. come on over here, buddy. <laughs> sit on sit next to me. Yeah, come watch this play. Yeah. So that year was rough. Yeah, that year So was... let's talk about how many teams you've been on. Uh, I believe, let's go down the line. I believe we got eight. Washington. We got Washington. Denver. In Denver. Philly. Dallas. Phoenix. Um, Golden State. Phoenix. Lakers, Phoenix, Seven. Cleveland, back to Denver, back, then, no, no, no. I went Cleveland, Denver, Phoenix, then came here, then yeah. came to Dallas. Okay. So I think it's eight teams. It's eight teams. Out of those teams. Two teams twice. Okay. You went to Denver twice. Mm-hmm. And, and here, those? Dallas twice. Yes, 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 yes. We talked about Dallas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> tell, tell, tell a fan your Dallas story. That I was 280, 280 <laughs> pounds. Yeah. I had just came off an injury. Uh, I had a stress fracture in my shin. And, um, yeah, I came back. And, I, and this is the era. This is transitioning, literally like the middle of the transitioning of the era of big men aren't the most dominant anymore. We don't just throw it in the post. and and But it's coming off of it. So we still got the white. Yeah, here we yeah, still yeah. got guys like that that are starting to fizzle out. Of we don't want to pass it to them anymore. Mm-hmm. We want big men that shoot threes and yeah. stay out. And what you call it? So I'm like, well, I need to get big and strong. So, I, so I'm 280. Yeah. cock diesel. I can't jump for nothing. Can't run can't for move. nothing. I'm like, what's the matter with me? Not thinking like you're 280 pounds. You're sir. 280. Pounds. This is what's the matter with you. Like what people don't understand. Like when you put that weight on. You're carrying that weight, that, that weight weird. with you. Yeah. So it's it's, For it's sure. nuts. That, right. that was the season, and I was in Dallas. That was mm. the season that I figured out, like, okay, clearly, being skinny, strong, 
athletic is my go-to. And that's the only reason I'm going to, that's the only way I'm going to be successful. So that half of that season, I want to say like 75% of that season at the 75th part of it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm going vegan. I asked, it was a coach, Coach Mo, uh, Mosley. Mm. Um, he, I think he coaches for Orlando now. He was he was vegan. I was asking him, like, what do I have to do? How do I do it? And I, and I decided to go vegan, and then I lost all that weight. And then that next year, I went to Golden State and won back-to-back championships. Dope. Before we get to the championships, because I'm sure that's, that's what we're all dying to know about. What, because um, you talked about figuring out you had asthma. Second year in the league, how did how did that, that go about? You just did it on your uh, own? Or? No, they the the team was just wondering like why the hell he keep getting tired when he get in the game like yeah. the first two minutes like don't make sense. And they were watching, yeah, and watching. They okay. were watching me work out. They knew I was doing the work. Yeah, so they had the same questions like mm. what, what the hell. So then we went to like the pulmonary, is it pulmonary? I think it's the pulmonary uh, people, no and uh, they were just like, yeah, you got asthma, you need an inhaler, I mean, whatever. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, but and you what? sitting there like. Really? What? I'm like, this is what's matter with this, me? This, this, <laughs> I was out of shape. Is this what's going on? I thought it wasn't on? working hard enough. Cool, bro. Yeah. But at that same time, bro, I could have gave up. You know what I'm saying? Can you For imagine sure. like your whole life people telling you you're out of shape? Basically, you ain't shit. Work harder. Yeah. And uh, you Sometimes. like internally, you like, bro, I can't breathe. Like, yeah. I don't know. Like, how, how do y'all do it? Y'all, exactly. y'all, I just <laughs> ran the same 10 laps you ran. Like, you feel cool? You and good. I'm working just as hard as you. Just as hard. I'm in the gym the same much you in the gym. Yeah. Like, so, how are you doing this? It had to be something. But I, 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 the last thing I thought was I have asthma. asthma. Yeah, that's crazy, bro. That is crazy, to be honest with you. So, uh, was there anything throughout before we get to Golden State and the championships along that way that, like, was a turning point that, like, clicked for you? Or was it when you got to Golden State? More, it was more, it was more humbling for me just the, the, the injury. I got injured the end of my Denver uh, time. I think it was you like. You in Denver how many years before this? Uh, I believe the first year, two, the first or three, year, two or three. Two or three. Two or three. Um, and then at the end of it, I got injured and traded to Philly. Um, so I was still weaning that injury. And then even the first year at Dallas, I was still weaning that injury. I was like getting better and getting better and just yeah. trying to lose weight and, and try to not let the, the, uh, the pain, the pain, I was still in pain. You know what I'm yeah. saying? My shin was still hurting, but I'm mm. just like, I have a rod in the middle of my shin right now. Mm. So it's like, they were like, well, it can't break again. So I would have to go into workouts knowing like, even though my shit's hurting right now, yeah, it's not gonna break. Yeah, so keep going, type mm-hmm. shit. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So knowing that is is hard. Like people don't understand that. Like I'm hurting every sure. fucking day for and, sure. And my job is to jump and run and set screens. Set screens. You get hit constantly. Get hit constantly. And I'm like, this shit hurts. It's getting a little better, but this shit still hurts. Yeah. But fuck it, I'm gonna fight through it. Hey, that's big time. Yeah, that's big time. You know, I just thought about this. Could you imagine not f- finding out you had asthma? Still, bef- bro. Before going to Denver? Um, bro, like, I, I, I mean, you still had the to play there. the crazy part is, this is the crazier <laughs> part. I wasn't taking my asthma meds the right way. <laughs> oh my God. Like, it wasn't like they explained it. They was just like, yeah, take your inhaler, cool. Not knowing I needed other asthmatic yeah. medications yeah. later on. But like, yeah, like it was it was ongoing. That's crazy. It was bro. still ongoing. That's crazy. I would, I would, I'm about to go in the game, cool. Mm-hmm. Not knowing you gotta wait like 30 minutes before you take your uh, inhaler before you before you go in the game type shit. That's you wild. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, it's just it's really information, man. It's really like, and now the NBA is totally different. They check everything. You know what I'm saying? If you got a toe fungus, everything. they're gonna be like everything. What is this? We gonna figure it Medical out. Medical day you know is the worst. Yeah, they they, they check gosh, everything. Bro. So, yeah. but we got a Golden State fan in here. He is dying to know all this information. You get the Golden State. You get to a championship pedigree organization. Mm-hmm. How'd you feel? Uh, Were felt, you excited? I felt good. I felt real good. I was like, I'm gonna just lock in because mm-hmm. you know, like. I had just got waived from Dallas. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like, oh, they signed me. They signed me to a non-guarantee. Yeah, I'd earn it. You get what I'm saying? So it wasn't like, oh, you guarantee you about to go, mm -mm." Mm mm-mm. Like, I I ain't going to sit here and act like I thought I was going to get cut. 
because I didn't, I didn't think I was actually, yeah. I knew I was going to make the team, mm -hmm. but just that monkey on your back, like you can get cut. Just yeah, let you yeah, know. For like, sure. <laughs> for sure. Like just to let you know. So it, it was definitely a, a humbling experience. Mm -hmm. Um, but I went in there with open eyes, open arms, and open mind, and just embracing the culture, if anything. Because I looked at it as, these motherfuckers just went to the finals last year. They lost to, this was the, the year after they lost to LeBron. 16, yep. Uh, I think 3-1 or whatever, mm -hmm. so. 3-1 lead. How was, was the, how was the, like, how locked in and, like, because just thinking about that, you're coming to a team who just lost in the finals, 3-1. Right. They come back. And then y'all get K the same year. Yeah, K. Like, the hell is going Sheesh. on? Y'all not supposed to lose a game. We damn near didn't, for real. Yeah, yeah, true. We was really going I crazy. Mean, it was, it was really so much fun. No. Like, it made no sense. So, going, into, going into games with that much confidence, with that much firepower. So, like, having K get there, right? Yeah. Did it take a little bit of like, okay, yeah, y'all beat us last year, but y'all know what's going on now. Um, or did they still have I wasn't like that? There, I wasn't there the year before, so I don't know the sentiment of the feeling. Mm. But once K got there, everybody just had a whole different confidence. Well, I don't know different, but he had a whole confidence of- Swagger like, to it. Yeah. We're going to win. Like, yeah, we're about to win this shit. What's, like every game we're in there, like, we about to bust y'all ass. There's yeah, nothing y'all can do about it. And the thing is, was it more of like you had a little pressure? Like, if we don't win with this roster- the hell is going on? Like, did y'all feel that? Or y'all just I feel like, like definitely people. Cause y'all did, bro, y'all played the right way. You yeah, know what I'm saying? It played wasn't the like right it was, way. It wasn't. That, that made it so much easier. Exactly. You know what exactly. I'm saying? So as far as, as far as that, like you going in every game knowing you winning. Mm -hmm. Bro, I heard y'all was coming out from warm ups with like. Disrespectful. Really disrespectful. It was crazy. It, it was, was really disrespectful the way we would come out for warm ups. Sometimes like, we'd come out for warm ups at like 11, yeah. 13. Just to let y'all know, normal NBA teams, 20 minutes. You come out 20 minutes. I heard they were coming out with like eight, <laughs> nine, 10 minutes left to warm up. You play in Toronto, you might miss the Canadian. The Canadian. <laughs> you might miss the Canadian anthem. Minutes, which I don't know why we do that. <laughs> it makes no sense. What is, no offense to Canada while I'm in Canada, <laughs> but. Why do we have to do it at 12 minutes? Why can't we do it when the regular national anthems are happening? But yeah. We still, that's NBA talk to please us. We just, we just won't answer. Google that and then let us know, please. Yeah. But we still want to do the anthem, just, just, just knock them right, both out. Right before or after time. the American anthem. Like, exactly. Now we pushing it in between the workout. Yeah, man. It doesn't make sense. We got we got stuff we do, rituals, all rituals, that. Rituals, yeah. Come on, and then man. one but, game out of every year. Yeah. Dang, I couldn't imagine, but I guess if you're playing for Toronto, you got to do they, the anthem at 12 minutes every time. Yeah, exactly. They're they, like, they, they know what they, they know. Yeah, they know. They, they probably listen, come out at 25. <laughs> we played them in Dallas. They already standing there. We still <laughs> shoot if they ready. Right. But back to Golden State. Yeah. Uh, what was, y'all didn't really have that many hiccups that year. No. Y'all was, like, was smacking. There was, there was no room. Everybody, for the the lineups were were deadly. The 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 players were clearly deadly, and we had fun. And the thing Golden State is that's that's different than every other organization I've been in is they take care of their players. Mm -hmm. It's a players first team. Yeah, like super players first team. That's dope. That's dope. So as far as we're gonna go through the first championship first, was that the year where y'all lost to the Clippers game one? Or was that the next year? See, I'm not the guy who going, I'm not the Chris Pauls who going to be like, oh, yeah, uh, I remember it was yeah, game yeah. four of the <laughs> season in 2017. You know what year it was. What year was it? Was it 17 or 18? I actually don't remember. I'm, I'm definitely not going to remember. I'm going to tell you that. That's all good. Okay. All right. Oh, 17, they played the Pelicans. No, that was, that was 14. You talking about first round or first, first round? Game? First round. First round, oh. they played the I don't remember. We swept everybody. I think first first championship we went sixteen and one. Oh yeah, yeah, y'all did. I think the second championship was sixteen and three, maybe sixteen and yeah, one. Look that up. Please and y'all and y'all and y'all lost the one in the finals. Yeah, and we won it in Cleveland. Yeah, yeah. So y'all y'all knew y'all it was we over. we knew we was, yeah we knew we was winning. Y'all was win like when y'all went back to Cleveland. 
You gotta go bust their ass. We it was over. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It was like we're not and coming. We're not coming and, back. And then they have that. And besides me and KD, they have that on their back. No, nah, they know about the three one us yeah. again. Hell no. Nah. So they going even harder. So does it? It's true that Clay was like, I'm not giving up my damn shots. I'm gonna still get my shots. I even mean, okay, was coming. Yeah, but but Clay's shots are different than everybody else's shots. That's true. You know what I'm saying? Clay doesn't need to dribble with his shots. That's true. That's like, true. He's getting shot. He had 60 <laughs> with 11 dribbles. I was there. That was nuts. That shit was crazy. The release of his shot and the energy he was exerting without dribbling was amazing. Talk about Oracle. Oh, man. Oracle. I never like, experienced Oracle. You went straight to Chase? I went him? straight to Chase. Oh. Never experienced Oracle. I heard or- it was most. Oracle in the middle of Oakland was. Mm. I heard it was nuts. Energy. The energy was crazy. The fans so were loud. insane. It was completely yellow all the time. You know, like you go in the gyms, you'd be like, well, whose gym are we in right now? Yes. <laughs> like the, when I used to play for the Lakers, we would go to New Orleans, and you know, New Orleans is red or yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Mm-mm, all uh-huh. yellow in that thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's all, but no, nah, no, go and stay going the road. We taking our fans with us. It don't matter where we at. We in Dallas, all blue. It nah, it's all yellow it in there. It's a whole matter. half section. Oh my God. Yellow. Hey, listen, that's one thing. They, they travel. Yeah, for they sure. They travel. For sure. And even if they're not traveling, it's fans somewhere who rock with them mm. and going crazy. But, yeah, it was never no – you will never catch an a Oracle home game with people in, the, in other jerseys. Yeah. it would be 12 of them in there. 20,000 people <laughs> is 12 of the opposing team. Um, week. So then the next year, mm-hmm. y'all get – is that the when the Rockets was going crazy? Yeah. That was – I could have lost that one. No. Could have lost that one. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What was the series? It was four um, three. That went seven. What did it go seven? That one went seven. Can, that one went seven. Twenty seven threes in a row. Be honest with me. Yeah, twenty seven. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Be honest. I was at I was at game five. I was at game five. And they win. Y'all going back to what's the name? I think they're up 3-2 at that point. I don't remember. If, so Chris, true. if Chris don't go down. You could say if. If it was a fifth, we'd all be drunk. It's true. But it ain't. You're right. You know you're what I'm right. saying? Like, you're right. that's how, like I said, you're right. luck. You're right. Luck is a no, part it's of it's a, a it's lot a of big, this. Big, Thinking of winning a champion, people think winning a championship, you get no luck. No, you have to for sure get lucky. You got to have a, the squad, but you also got to have a lot of for luck. Sure. The luck of lucky. nobody getting injured, the luck of people hitting shots, yeah. the luck of the opposing team not yeah. playing well. And like, it's so crazy to think about Steph wasn't even playing great at that moment, but y'all had come on, K- we got in 11. K- Clay. <laughs> You had Draymond yeah, going crazy. Dre. How, how's Dre as a teammate? Dre as a teammate is a lot. He's a lot as a teammate. Mm-hmm. But you know it's coming from a great place. For sure. Of, and you can't say shit because he's he winning. It. He bringing it and, and he, he winning. It. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He's a winner. He get that shit done. Yeah, he get it done. So it's like, yeah, you're right. You got it. You know what I'm saying? I've never seen someone quarterback a defense like he does. For sure. For sure. Just Romer. He, he roams, roams it, but he quarterback off and everybody. Tell you where you need to be for sure. Everybody for sure, and, and that's a true talent. Shout out to Dre. That's necessary, and for sure. Did he? Was there like any like meetings y'all had of like telling everybody they roll? And everybody just fell into it. Uh, no, nah, it was it, that role was the roles were set. Everybody knew who. Was, everybody knew who, who was. Was roles. Roles. Yeah, okay. what? You know what I'm saying? I mean, they had it pretty much. It was. It was. Fa- bro, what? Sean Livingston <laughs> knew what he had to do. He gonna come in there and get you a whole bunch of middies. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He gonna come in there and lock down. We gonna. Uh, we. we man, it was a lot of fun, man. It was a lot of fun of a whole bunch of guys. A whole bunch of guys. A whole conglomerate of guys that knew their role and what mm. they need to do. Mm. I know I'm gonna go in there for my good eight to ten minutes, catch as many lobs from Dre as possible, block as many shots, block as many shots, play great defense. So. Yeah. And then make it a whole lot easier when you know you what to win. To win is do what you got to do. That's to win. what it is, man. So then, uh, after that second championship is when you USA Left. team. Uh, no, USA team was what year? Twenty twenty. Twenty two. Low key last year, it was really twenty twenty one, but all the signs said twenty twenty. It was because of COVID. Oh my god. <laughs> we walking around. I'm like, yeah. damn. I'm like, damn. They cheap as hell. Why they didn't? <laughs> 
Why you put 2021? But then I thought about it. I was like, oh, because yeah. Olympics is every four years. So yeah, I got I, Makes sense. That's still cheap as hell. But it was COVID though. Yeah. So I, what, I, what would it look like if it said I get it. Olympics, Tokyo, 2021? He'd be like, that doesn't make sense. Why would they have it a, <laughs> 40 years from now? They're going to be like, why would they have it an odd year that year? Yeah, that makes so, sense. I get that it. makes sense. But so then you leave Golden State. Leave Golden State, go 18. to the Lakers uh, on the minimum. Mm-hmm. But a starting spot. Mm-hmm. Um, for the most infamous, uh, the most infamous team franchise in the league for me, like that's one of the best. I'm like, you can't. Like, I can go to the Lakers and start and play. Come on, bro. I was like, oh yeah, I'm going about? to the Lakers. We're like, don't. And this is uh, this did is Brian, LeBron's first year. Did he announce he was coming yet? Oh uh, yeah, he did. Okay. Well, that probably had a little bit to do with it too. Uh, or you didn't really care that Brian was there or not. I, I did obviously, yeah. but at the same time, I was like, I want that starting role. I like, I'm that. tired of being a, I feel that. a yeah, yeah. bench player, ten like, player, ten yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, I, I need more. I um, and then I, I had I had my best best season in my career that year. Actually, mm-hmm. I think I averaged like twelve and eight. But the last I would say like thirty games, I was going crazy. I had my career high at thirty three and twenty. Um, Against who? Um, Brooklyn. Who? Uh, were you on that team? I might have been on that with Jared team. Allen. Yeah. Oh, y'all bust y'all ass. I went crazy that game on y'all. Yeah, 33, 30, 20? 33 and 20. And that one? Nope, we lost that game. By a little bit, though. And I think it was actually a game that was it at the crib? Where was it at? It was in Lakers. It was at the Lakers. And it was a game where we would have, if we would have won like I think two more, we would have got that A spot in the uh in the playoffs. But I think uh You know why you lost? There you go. I'm just wondering, you know why you lost? Is that a rhetorical question or you got to answer after that? Yeah, y'all there it there. is. That Come wasn't on. the reason. No, no. Anyway, I was there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and, and, 20, and, we then also, that. and then also that year, uh, I think Brian sat out the rest of the, the yeah. rest of the, uh, rest of the season. Yeah, so I was just like, oh yeah. man, god yeah. damn it! Especially after the good year too. Yeah, Starting, pissed. And then, then y'all turned that year, motherfucker up. Eighty came. Jesus. Yeah. Well, y'all went. And you know what happened that next? You know what happened that year too? What happened? Y'all lost again to us. I mean, we won the championship. So y'all did really win the championship. But y'all lost again. You know how? What? You know why? Why? Me. Because you was there? Yes. You was the reason? Yeah. Wow. AD shot the, play the clip. Me, K, Garrett Temple, we sitting over there, of course, on the bench. And uh, he shoots the three right there. Hey! It was your hey that, yeah. that mm-hmm. did that. Back round. Boing. Miss. Yeah. We going out that night. The was Next the reason. thing you know. COVID. It happened right after that. Right after COVID. that. Oh, my <laughs> oh, God. COVID my God. ruined that season. Right, bro. That, that season was crazy. Oh, my God. I was having so much fun I feel that for season. y'all. Oh, it was a blast. Y'all didn't have no parade. No nothing, nothing, bro. That, can you imagine being on a winning, the number one team in the league, and the number one team is the Los Angeles Lakers, and you're on that team living in L.A. City up. With the then world the, then open. Then the Dodgers win it. The Dodgers, the Dodgers won it the year. I thought they won it that year. Yeah, they might have. I don't the host, and I think they got a parade. Yeah, they did, but not us. Sick. And then we went to the bubble and won it. How was the bubble? I hated it. Really? I hated it. I loved the aspect of go to the gym, work hard, get everything done, and then be able to go to dinner with my friends. Yeah. Be able to go to the beach. But be able to every day. Every day. Every day you could do whatever you wanted to do. I love that. But mm-hmm. then going to the bubble and the just time shift of just, okay, now we're locked in. Not even locked in. Now we're just here with our teammates. Yes. Like, we're just here with the league. I don't want to see y'all yeah, 24-7. All no, no. Can't like, do it. Practice, that's cool. I'm at the, from nine to three, cool. But, bruh, that shit was, I might have I might have been depressed in the bubble and, and not known it. Really? For real, Yeah. Like I would it's literally good. go work out and just go to my room. Play and that game. really put things in perspective because think about it. We number one team. Y'all got a really good chance of winning, and you're saying you feel like you're damn near depressed. All right, bro. Hated it's crazy. It, bro. It was hated it going to that run. And I thought, I, and I'm a type of person who I like being on the road. Mm-hmm. So I thought I was like, oh, it's gonna be a breeze. I, I'm, I'm gonna love it. Mm-hmm. I was cool the first, I would say, two three weeks. But then after that, I was just like, oh no, this is it. Like. After I didn't went to all the restaurants in the bubble, I didn't went all the places. I didn't fish. I didn't bike road. I didn't <laughs> golf. I'm you only like, golf. I, I, I might have golfed like twice, and I was just like, 
I'm really like on a <laughs> <laughs> in a bubble for real. And yeah. what's crazy is to think about like during the playoff time, even before playoff teams leaving. Like yeah. you seeing people You seeing people leave. leave like, and you still in there like, all right, see y'all later. You get to go to the real world. And we just watching y'all team go at the team. It. Yeah. We just like, oh, we the last two here. Yeah. I remember we came when we was going to the finals. We seen Miami, I think, like in a little hotel at the bar or whatever, and we walking and we walking through to go to the lunch, the food room or whatever, and we just like, damn, we really the only two people here. <laughs> There's no one else here. Everybody not else like left. we in the finals. It's like everybody else. Like, nobody crib. else here, bro. Pissed. Y'all had the families there at that point, though. Yeah, we did. Yeah, that probably that probably made it better though. It definitely made it bit. better. Like just. Enjoying because yeah. when my daughter came, which was maybe two months in, mm. I believe, like we didn't get into that last month, they the family became to come or the last two months. I don't yeah. remember when she came, I got to experience everything over again through her eyes. That was cool, but then after that, it was boring again. I'm just like, well, back where I was, God, damn. Cause I was like, I've been seeing this pool in this big ass slide, yeah. Now my daughter here, cool. Now she can go down in the pool and go down in this big was ass. Was it slide. silent in there? What you mean? I know silent? y'all was turned. Like if y'all score, y'all was lit. Yeah, but like, was it silent? Like, it's no, smart. no, they put they had the fake, uh, fake fan noise. So it was still it's kind of like somewhat hey, loud. Shh, one bro, one game, bro. The 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 fan noise skipped like it was on the CD. Uh-huh. It was shh. <laughs> we like, whoa, this is what it is for real. And then it came back, and we just like, yeah, we like, we that need shit was mind that shit blowing. That, yeah. yeah, keep that on. It yeah. was mind blowing, and it really like. It really like low key scared me, low key, because I was just like, "Hey, this is like low key, like the future, like on some virtual yeah. reality type shit for real." For like sure. they're just sure. pumping yeah. in crowd noise, bro. It like it was crazy, and they had the video people, had the people in the. Bro, that was wild. I'm like this that is was weird, bro. Where bro, are we right it was now? Wow. But then you go to um, oh, what I was about to say, I lost my train of thought. After but I won the chip, yeah. You win the chip in the bubble. Oh, did you think Miami's going? Miami had a chance uh, to win. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, I think everybody. Yeah, I think everybody has a chance for sure. You never know what could happen. Yeah. yeah. But we weren't going in there like, oh no, Miami's going to beat us. No, no. we definitely was going there like rolling, we about to bust their ass. Y'all was rolling. But they was playing well. They was playing Especially real well. Especially after uh, with the with the black jerseys y'all had, them Johnson was fire. Yeah. You got to keep that jersey. You can never get that one away. Never. Never. Ever. Ever. Shout out to R.I.P. Kobe, man, for sure. Hardest championship? Um, I mean, I guess I got to say the- uh, Bubble? Yeah, the bubble one, by far. Because the other two was just a breeze. We just, we just zooming through them. But the bubble one was the hardest for sure. Y'all was smacking everybody with the yeah. Warriors, bro. Yeah. We were, it was that easy. We were, everybody was competing for second. For sure. Top. top everybody two. was competing for top, second. They was, they was competing for top two, not two. Yeah. Or top two. Top two. Or two. two. Yeah. yeah. You're going to be two. Yeah, you're going to be pretty two. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. And then you get a call from the USA team. Um, how'd that work? How'd that, something happened. How'd that work? Nope, I didn't. Nope. This is the next year. Nope. So 2020, COVID happened. COVID happened. USA is canceled. There's no Olympics. Yep, no COVID Olympics. is in the middle of, of yep. COVID. Mm-hmm. So then I get traded to Cleveland. Yep. So I go to Cleveland. I'm actually playing well. I'm a whole bunch of young guys. I that. I'm having a blast. I'm, yep. I'm I'm back to like I feel the youth. The yeah, youth is just yeah, yeah, yeah. Ex- exhuming. It happens me. a lot with a lot of vets. Now. Oh, like yeah. they go to a young team and they oh. start moving better. I'm like, I, don't want that. I was well, I was enjoying it. I was enjoying it, and I and I feel like I fell back in love with basketball. I kind of got out of that mm. that bubble depression. Yeah, like I got back. Oh yeah, I'm back to the grind. I love mm. it, and I was having a blast. Um, and then I got traded to Denver. Um, but Mike Malone didn't play me. Mm. And I was just like, in my mind, I'm like, why am I here? Like, you're not going to play me. Like, I'm a yeah. vet. Like, I'm not here to just have fun, bro. Mm. Like, I want to compete play. and play. Yeah. yeah. Like, I understand you going to the playoffs. Blah, blah. And I believe we played one game where I started at the, I don't know if I started at the five, but I played a lot of minutes with Jokic. Mm. We had a hell of a game. Yeah. But it didn't matter. It didn't matter. I guess it wasn't a part of the plans. It wasn't part of the. <laughs> You're showing too much. It wasn't a part of it. Yeah. Um. So I didn't even really play a lot that game. Um. Mm-hmm. Or that series. But the last game we played, we lost to the Phoenix Suns, and I think we lost by like 
thirty or something, and mm. I got in at the end, mm. um, like on the garbage time minutes. But I was like, that whole that whole era where I wasn't playing, I was I was getting extra extra work on trying to play five on five, one on one. I was just in my bag. Like I felt like I, it was the summer for me. Yeah, and you know the summer for bigs is different from the summer for guards and mm -hmm. stuff. Guards and stuff, they working on what they gonna actually do. Yeah, in the goddamn game, yeah. bigs. <laughs> Unfortunately, now bigs are like, just running around and catch lives. So in the summer, we can't just do that all day. In mm -hmm. the summer, we point guards. We yeah. fucking short guards. We going crazy. Going crazy. So, I was, so I'm going crazy in, in the practice and shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? The little scrimmages, three on three, blah, blah. Just the yeah. conditioning practices type yeah. shit. And then uh, we go to, uh, and then we play Phoenix. We lose that last game, the elimination game, I believe, first round. Yeah. And... Uh, I get in garbage time, and coach look at me. He's like, you want to go? I'm like, yep, damn right. I'm gonna go in. Get some, get the workout. <laughs> shit, fuck it. So I get in. Uh, I'm playing hard, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, and then I think uh, Chris Ball comes up to me after the game, and he like, bro, I, I, I rocks with what you was doing out there. I'm like, what you mean, bro? I'm just playing basketball. Yeah. He's like, nah, bro, you ain't had to go in there and really like play for real, for real. Yeah. And you still was going crazy. I was like, for sure. And then I feel like that was like the initiation of, the damn, finish. maybe I could go there next year. And mm -hmm. then. Talk yeah. about that. Y'all um, y'all was rolling. Man, amazing, bro. A group of guys who are really just locked in and fun. Like, and coming off of finals loss. Coming off a of finals loss. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, in my mind, I, I'm like, oh, shit, it's like a deja vu. Yeah. I just came. From I was when I was uh when I got to Golden State that first year, mm -hmm. they had just lost. I came, we won. I'm like, oh yeah, it's deja vu. Yeah. Blah blah. So um I get there, it's instant, I instantly fit in. It's like yeah. instant. Like yeah. I'm with the energy, I'm with it all. Mm -hmm. Um I do all my little rah rah before the game or whatever. Yeah. Play the clip. Um, it's hilarious. Play the cure. <laughs> <laughs> I do my little rah rah, and I've been doing that since the Lakers, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and we got 15 different handshakes for everybody. Like, we just really have fun, and we are rolling through teams. I think mm -hmm. we might have had been playing bad, like, the first three to four games, maybe. Then y'all got hot. And then we went 18, we 18 wins in a row. in a row, and we were going crazy. And the first day I got there, I'm, I'm doing my little rah-rah or whatever. First thing I say is – we the best team in the motherfucking world. Mm -hmm. And I believed it. Everybody believed it. Mm -hmm. And everybody believed that. And we were the mm -hmm. number one team the, the, the whole year. The whole year. Um, 18 wins in a row, franchise record, 64 wins. So, yeah, we going crazy. Were y'all gunning for it? Uh, what do you mean? Did y'all know that y'all was going for the franchise record? No. It just happened. No, it just happened. We was just we just like, we gonna try to get as many wins as possible. Yeah, like so we get want the home best court. position yeah. ever in, in the playoffs. Got you. Um, yeah, and bro, the team the team is so well put together. It's well coached. Monty is extremely communic. He communicates a lot. He tells mm. you what it is. He tells you what it ain't. He tell you mm. if you're gonna play. He tell you if you're not gonna play. He tell you what he needs from you. He tells me if you want some bullshit. Yeah, he, he keep it a hundred with you, and I and I love that about Monty. Um. Playing with Chris Paul is a, is a crazy experience just because you get to experience like a mega mind of a of a basketball player. Someone mega. who sees plays like yeah. two, three plays ahead, like yeah. tendencies. Like mm -hmm. he's 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 a, and, I, and I've been blessed to be able to play with players like that, like LeBron and just I, play I've with played with a, dogs. I didn't play with a, a whole I've played with probably a starting 15 of Hall of Fame players for real. Easily. Like, like if I really like Easily. counted it out. Um, but yeah, just playing Book. with that, playing with Book, just, just, look, off. just looking at a dog in his eyes every day, just a bucket mm. that just wants to go at everybody's neck. Um, true I mean, dog. True dog, for sure. Um, I mean, it was amazing, man. It was truly amazing. And y'all played the Pelicans. Y'all beat them 4-2, mm -hmm. which – it was a really good series. It was a good series, bro. They really fought, good bro, series. For real. Yeah, they got it. Was, was, they was got, tired. Bro. Yeah. Was, Alvarado was guarding 94 <laughs> feet. On, like, I'm like, God damn. I'm like, <laughs> get Chris off the ball. He can't, like, he can't do this every yeah, game. Every had to game, bring bro. it up. Had to bag it up from the other free throw How line crazy is the one game he had, he didn't miss a shot? Crazy. But he was so calm with it, though. Calm. Like, yeah. <sighs> getting to his spots. Easy. Easy. Getting to his spots. Crazy. Then y'all running into them boys. Yeah, yeah. Running into them boys. Talk about it, man. Game seven. You on our team now, so it, we good. But game seven. Let's go and put it out there. JaVale hated us. 
He I ain't hated. gonna lie, bro. I, I, I threatened Bertons. <laughs> I threatened Spence. Spencer. I know Spence too. And like Spence, Spence is like Spence. best friends with my yeah. sister type type yeah. energy. And I told Spence, like, bro, I'm gonna fuck you up, bro. <laughs> like you hit me again, I'm fucking you up. Him and Bertons. Like verbatim. You can ask him. I verbatim told him that. And I was just looking for my moments to where like I don't get a flagrant, but I can get a hard file on him. Unfortunately, I didn't get my fucking moment. And then I'm teammates with him the next year. So I'm like, <laughs> hey, listen. I'll never get my lick back. We knew. I think don't roll. We are gonna make sure y'all gonna stop rolling to the basket. Bro, yeah, I'm rolling. Us. I'm rolling. They coming. They coming from the corner. Boom! Bow. I'm oh, like, we lighting them. We light. I'm like, is that ass. what we on? Like y'all letting oh. that rock? Like we light. This is crazy. I'm up. like, all right. Now if I hey. knock, some, I'm telling the refs too. I'm like, yo, if I knock somebody out, it's y'all <laughs> fault. Because like the way they are are hitting me, y'all just letting this. Okay, cool. This hey. is what we can do now. All right, cool. There's one time Vale's just on the ground. He just like. Okay. And Spence told me, I remember Spence came to me, he said, bro, Vail came to me, he said, Spence, I'm going to fuck you up. For sure. I was crying, bro. But game seven, man, let's talk about it. Ain't nothing to talk about, man. A... We lost by a lot. Got the ass whooped. Yeah. There was really nothing y'all could do that day. Y'all was hitting everything. We was missing everything. Going into it. Very confident, right? Very confident. Number one team in the league. What do you mean? You gotta be a little bit, little bit of pressure, knowing like ah, uh, no pressure at all. Nobody. We on the plane right back when we was three three. We nobody was drinking wine. We relaxing, playing cards. Cool. We got it, man. We've been here before. We got it. Blah blah blah. blah, blah. Clearly not. Sheesh. Halftime. Silent. It's... Were we annoying? I don't know what you can say, yeah. for real. What was halftime? We were down 20, 30? 30. It was 30 ball. I don't know what, like, there was really nothing you could really say. I think we, I think somebody had talked in the locker room, just like, bro, we got to step the fuck up, clearly. And <laughs> clearly. clearly. And we got to lock in, like, 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 what's up? This is it. Like, what are we going to do? You got to play perfect. We do really point. do. Yeah, we really do. Yeah, and hope y'all are still not hot. Yeah. Like, and then we came out. Step same, back, step same back. energy, bro. Yeah, same same energy. Like, were we an annoying the bench? Man, we not looking at y'all. No, y'all wasn't annoying. Y'all be thinking y'all really affecting people for real. Y'all not. Just I just heard know. from two, two of your former teammates that we affected. It. No, not me. Anybody. What annoyed me was not. y'all fucking giving me rib shots. That's what it annoyed me. <laughs> that was the only right. thing that annoyed well, me. We didn't affect you, but we got somebody else on the team, so yeah. we did our job. Yeah, I'll tell you that. All right, so. Now we can get to USA. Yeah. Oh, oh actually, USA was before that. Before summer. that. Yeah, yeah. Before I know. I just want to take care of the NBA yeah. first. Let's talk um, about USA because that's, uh, I've been on the USA team before. Not in the league, of course, but yeah. like it's a big, big thing for, for sure. Basketball. Like we, we all see it. Dream team, redeem team. Mm-hmm. It's a big deal. How, how was that? Um, it was amazing. So the way it, the way it worked out was, uh, so my mother is an Olympian. She, she, 37, 38 years ago. I don't remember how long it was ago, but she won a in the 84 Olympics, I believe, mm-hmm. a gold medal. So um I so my business partner, uh Kez Reed, he was like, call, I don't know if I called Colangelo or who I called, but I was like, I called a, a head of the USA. I called him myself personally. Got their number for I think my agent or something. I was just like, yo, I see you don't have a center. I see you're about to get Kevin Love or whatever. If that doesn't work out, I'll be an alternate. Let it, let me know. I'm ready. And I'm working out all summer. I'm locked in. And I'm just like, in my mind, I'm like, I know Tyson Chandler was on the team and, and won that thing. So I got the same build, same energy. I can bring what they what he brought. Yeah. Um, so because they didn't have a real big. They didn't have no big. They had Bam. Um, he a big, but he only like 6'9. Yeah. So I'm like, just in case, you know, you're running the Rudy Gobert. I don't know what would've happened. Yeah. Um so I hit him, told him that, whatever, whatever, and then it's whatever. So then uh, they start playing. I think they lose to, like, Nigeria. Was it Nigeria that they lost yep. to? And everybody's like, this Olympic team isn't going to win. Yeah. Is this the blah, blah, blah team, whatever, whatever. And then I think Kevin Love pulled out. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as Kevin Love pulled out, they called me. And I'm just like, the crazier part is I'm, I'm in L.A. working out. I think I'm staying in the hotel uh, at the time. And the hotel blinds, they open. They, they, they're they like the ones you got to press to open yeah, or whatever. Yeah. It's like, it's like, 
I'm asleep. I'm not planning on waking up until about 10 a.m. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The blinds just open. I didn't press nothing, nothing. They just open. <laughs> what the hell? It's 8 a.m. Why the hell? <laughs> I look at my phone. I got like four, five missed calls. My agent. Hello? Hey, uh, Olympics call. They want you. They want you to come. You got to pack up and leave Friday. I think it's Wednesday. Or I think it's Thursday, actually. Yeah. Thursday morning, early. Um, you got to leave Friday. All right, cool. I'm there. Yeah, Boom. Yeah. They but know. I'm like, why did these blinds just open up? <laughs> not not I just made the USA team. <laughs> what are these blinds doing? <laughs> what is that? Is that like a, yeah. a premonition? Like, That's is that tough. some, it was, That's bro, it was tough, crazy bro. energy. I'm just like, bro, this is crazy. It's meant to be. Yeah. So some things are just meant to be. So I pack up, my head my ass to Vegas. Um, Cause they got a little the pre games in, in Vegas and mm-hmm. shit and training camp or whatever and go downhill from there. It was it tough? Tough. FIBA basketball completely different. Man, hell no, it wasn't tough, man. We in there working out. It was it was way easier than the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> we just practicing. We and our practice was really like a couple of drills, five on five. We just, just playing hooping. five on five, and I love that type of practice. Yeah. That's my type of practice. Y'all just hooping, hooping. We hooping. But he'll stop. Hey, you got to do that. You got to make sure you're in the corner. Blah, blah. Go ahead. We yeah. just hoping. Every practice. I'm like, this shit fire. Who y'all playing shit? Um, France. Yeah, That's France. Close. It was close, though. Uh, I don't remember the score. Yeah, I don't think. It might not have been. I don't know. We but just know y'all got it done. How did. was that feeling? Amazing, you saw the banner go up. It was truly amazing, man. Just saw the flag. You know them man? putting those. Yeah, those what you call us on our neck, those medals, those gold medals on our neck, and we was really on some like, bro. We we went in bronze or silver, bro. We're leaving, bro. We're yeah. not sitting here taking these. What's nah, it called? Like, it's disrespectful for for the U.S. for the U.S.A. If you go out there and don't get a gold medal, like it doesn't feel right, especially at least in basketball. For sure. If it's anything else, maybe, but basketball. For some reason, we just have the the biggest chip on our shoulders it. as for Americans sure. to where like sure. when we go out you there. You probably feel more pressure in that than you did the championships. Uh, no, no, not me personally. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't. <laughs> this dude just laid back like ah, let's just I, see what happens. I, I mean, I it wasn't really on my shoulders. You know what yes. I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I was. You gotta think I was an alternate. They yeah, asked me true, to true, come true. last. Yeah. I wasn't there in the beginning. Yeah. So hey, y'all get this shit. Done, the pressure man. wasn't on me. Yeah, but uh. No, I don't think it was really pressure, pressure, but it was definitely uh, a, a, a sense of urgency to yeah. where, like, all right, let's lock in. Like, we got to do what we got to do. But what I realized, like, being being there and visually, it was hard for guys who go out every night and score 30 to humble themselves. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because FIBA basketball is different from NBA basketball to where, like, you can't just be – one guy go get 30 and then we good type no, shit. Like everybody has to play. You and it'll choose. be five guys on the court who average 30 in the Ass. league. So you're like, Bro, you got who's a, the one that- You got a team, you got to line up with Dame, KD, Tatum. Come on, man. Come on, bro. Like how that's, do you- That's three 30 point scores right come there. On. And you can't play the way you play in the NBA you to can't. where like, hey, go get 30. Hey, yeah. go get 30. Hey, exactly. Go get 30. Just go exactly. give it to him. We mm-hmm. actually got to move the ball. For we sure. Gotta, so- it was it was it was it was an experience, and I, I appreciate that experience. The whole experience was amazing, just being there. And but the mm, the part I hate the most, we was in a bubble, bro. <laughs> Fuck, we was in another bubble, a Japanese bubble at that. It was just like all this technology I hear about Japan and everything. They was they was they would come into meetings and be like, uh. A lacrosse player, a USA lacrosse player, went to the mall and we sent them home and just look at us in the face like. We dare you to go somewhere. We're sending your ass home. <laughs> just like, God damn. We got to stay in this hotel. Because he went to the mall? Because he went to the mall. Somebody went to the mall That's and they sent, they, I don't think it was lacrosse. It was like some other sport. But they just sent their ass home. And they told us, they made sure they told us, like, we will send your ass home if you get out of this bubble. And I'm just like, God That's damn. Wild. Yeah. Damn. It, it had to be weird with no fans there, though. Um, it was, Bro, and the stadium was Huge. huge. The biggest state, it's, it's a stadium that holds like 100,000. But like a basketball stadium that holds 100,000. Yeah, that's, the, that's Like nice. we had walked in the stadium and then realized this isn't the stadium. This is a part of the stadium. Like it was the size of like two stadiums. But it was fucking crazy. It was the biggest stadium I've ever seen in my life. And, and it was yeah, literally just staffed there. Like, yeah. <laughs> like the lower bowls. 
peppered with people. Hey, listen, that's when you just, all right, let's get in here and win this let's game. Let's get in here win this game, home, man. man. Shit. All right, last thing. You're a Grammy nominated yeah. producer. For sure. <laughs> with Justin Bieber. Mm -hmm. That's big time, though. How did you start doing that? Um, music, I've always liked music, but one thing I've always liked more than music is technology. Mm -hmm. And the thing about music nowadays is more, do you know how to use a computer to make beats rather than do you know how to play the violin to make music? You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So to answer the question of do I know how to play instruments, no, no. I don't. Mm -hmm. But I am a nerd when it comes to technology. So like when the new iPhone, I've had every iPhone and I will have every iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> Even though they'll be like, oh, iPhone 13 has a flash now. Ooh, iPhone 14 has a brighter flash. Yes. He's like, <laughs> this brighter flash cost us $1,500 more? $1,500. God damn it. Yeah. But, uh, but I'm going to still buy it, and that's the messed up part about it. But, um, yeah, I'm a technology guy, man. So when I was when I first got drafted to the league, I bought my first I, uh, not iMac, but MacBook Pro. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I put on there was Logic Pro, which is a beat producing program. Mm -hmm. And then the first thing I did was YouTube how to sample. And because I loved Kanye at the time, like mm -hmm. college dropout Kanye and, and all that. And the way he sampled tracks, and I was just like, bro, this is fucking fire. Like, yeah. How's he doing this? So yeah. I YouTube how to sample and a video of Just Blaze came up. How to sample on Logic, a video of Just Blaze came up. You know what Just Blaze is, the producer? No, I do. You, you'll know once you search it up. Just put up music that Just Blaze has made. Yeah. Hits. Uh, <laughs> Um, but uh, then I, I, I figured out how to do that and then I started making sample beats or whatever, whatever. And I'm like, oh, this is fun. I'm really making beats. This is yeah. crazy off my computer. Like, yeah. I don't really know how to make music. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, I figured it out from my computer. So then I realized longer around my journey is, oh, you don't just use the stock beats that come in the program. You actually yeah. have to get drums and sounds from other producers yeah so then i started meeting other producers and they would give me sounds i mean i got a thousand drum 808s i got a million violin sounds blah blah woo, woo. and that's when i started realizing like it's the producing is a job bro it's really like it's not just go in there make a beat call it a day hear artists do your thing it's, your it's more about relationships if anything really like you have to know people you have to know writers you have to know artists you have to know a and r's you have to know when studio sessions are happening mm -hmm. and like it's an everyday thing for real so you just be, you basically got to get in the studio when they are like you got to find that's out one way it's like four or five ways of how you can get your beats placed to where like one is oh i know uh i know snoop dogg so i'm going to be in the studio with snoop dogg and make beats for snoop dogg mm -hmm. cool he's going to use it whatever then you have uh snoop dogg i know snoop dogg or snoop dogg's manager and he like hey man snoop needs some beats send some beats send a pack of beats and a pack of beats back then in like two in like 10 years ago a pack of beats they're all send 10 beats now motherfuckers want 100 beats like, all right, give me the beats. They just go through it. Nope, 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 nope. I mean, nope, you have to say no, no. I, I'm, I'm, I, I ain't, ain't saying that. I ain't got to that part yet. Um, so, and then you got uh, what's another way of, of getting producer? Uh, so then you have so for my situation with the Bieber track, mm. I know I've been making music for a while, and I met a group called Fifteen Hundred or Nothing. They're, they produce everything. They produce Nipsey Hussle's album. They produced uh, Roddy Rich's album, and so many more. Ron Isley album, like mm -hmm. they they crazy. My my mm -hmm. guy Rance, um, um, James Fauntleroy. It, it's a whole group of guys that are just musical geniuses, and they from Compton. Mm -hmm. They from they from L. A. Yeah. Um, and I met him through my manager, uh, Alani Ford, and I just stayed locked in with him, and she also stayed locked in with him too. So I, uh, Justin Bieber's writer, his main writer, been writing with him for years, 10, 10 15 years, or mm -hmm. however his career has been. Um, and I paid him $13,000 to, to write two songs for me, EDM songs for me, because I was trying to make EDM beats and things like that. And I never used them, never used them at all. <laughs> <laughs> but I paid that man thirteen thousand dollars to never, two, never used it. Yeah. Um, but about four, five, six years later, um, 
I had stayed in contact with him and I was like, uh, let's get in the studio. So we got in the studio. I'm playing him some sounds and I played this little this little riff that I had. It was actually a full beat and he liked the 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 sound in it. He was like, just mute the beat, but just let me hear the sound. And it was just it was just a like a vocal note that was like, uh, 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 and it was just going back and forth. And he was like, all right, put that on there. So he put it in a little machine, in the little Pro Tools, and we just started writing to it. And he's a crazy writer. He's not writing on on the, what'd you call it? He, he'll bring the mic in the studio. He'll have the, what'd you call it right there, and just go line by line of how to, of what he's going to write. Mm-hmm. So he so we going back and forth. Should I say this? Should I say that? I think you should say that. All right, cool. Uh, uh. By the end of the session, we got, uh, I believe, a verse and a half done, damn near the whole song, and a mm-hmm. chorus. So the chorus gonna go three times. So we damn near got the song done. Um, he's like, yeah, I'm probably finished the second, the second verse later. Blah blah blah. blah. But at the time, he just we just did a song. That's all it was. Yeah. It wasn't like we doing this song for an album. We doing this song for it was just like, and that's how just producers. That's how producers work though. Like yeah. you really have to get in, in studios with prominent people, writers, and pro- other producers, and just try to make some work. Mm. So he called me. I want to say. Months later, I don't know how many months, but he called me months later, but he called me because my house had got robbed in LA and his house had got robbed in LA. So he was calling me like, bro, I heard your house got robbed. Sorry to hear that, blah, blah. Trying to like compare notes type shit. Like yeah. who did this shit type mm-hmm. shit. And then at the end of that call, he was like, oh yeah, and you made the album. I'm just like, what do you mean I made the album? We talking what, about robbing houses what, and then- <laughs> what album are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> He's like, you made the Bieber album. I'm just like, Wow, that that's crazy. The way to end this conversation yeah, on a high note. Yeah, <laughs> cool, man. So I'm like, that's fire. So he sends me the song. The song is done, but it's just his voice on it. Bieber's voice isn't on it. Mm. It's his voice and his homie put drums on it. His homie, uh, his producer, uh, mm. friend Harv, yeah. he puts drums on it and the song is fire. It's called Available on uh, his Changes album. Okay. Um, And then I think like a, a couple months, a month after that, he sent me the Bieber version. I was just like, wow. Like, this is crazy. I really got a Bieber song. That's tough. And yeah, and then the album got nominated. Clearly met him. So, huh? Did you know I him didn't before? meet him. You've never met him? I believe I met him once, but I didn't meet Justin Bieber, that's which is shit. even crazier. You yeah, get what I'm saying? Yeah, I really like, that's what I'm saying. Like, people think like, ooh, I'm on a, what'd you call an album? But there's so many producers. If you look at credits of songs and albums, bro, it's so many people that go, that into, go it. into it. All those people didn't meet that artist. You look at a Kanye song, bro. They say Kanye when he uh when he's making songs, like he'll be making a song and then somebody will come in with some leather pants and he'll say leather pants and give them a credit for wearing leather pants. What? But it's really like that though. Like Learn people do every day, man. Yeah. Right. Like you'll be a writer, you'll get a writer's credit for coming in and be like, you shouldn't say tiger, you should say liger instead. And then they'll be like, You right. Writer's credit. I better get my writer's credit for that. And you'll get a percentage wow. of that record. Yeah, it's serious. Like that's why that's why people think like artists are supposed to be like billionaires and shit, but they're not because their splits they gotta are crazy. Pay, yeah. They gotta pay everybody. And that's why it's better off doing it on your own. On your own, but it's harder. But right? it's harder because yeah. you now you ain't got nobody pushing your stuff. Like you, you'll sure. see now like how artists, uh, how artists when they're on labels when they album come out, you know. And now when they go independent, and they album come out, you be like, what the album up? <laughs> <laughs> Because they had that machine behind them putting Nobody billboards in New York yeah. and all that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's a real, but it's, but I don't want, people think it's easy too. That's the crazy part, no. bro. That no. shit is hard. Even that shit just is from this job. little five minute spill you gave us, sounds hard as hell. Bro, it is, bro. Like if you really want to be a prominent producer, bro, you think like you can make one beat and now I'm on. Now everybody wants my beat. You know, nah. you got the tags. You got to do it again. Bro, you got to keep going to the studio, be in the studio from, uh, and, and artists are, are might be the hardest people to work with too. Yeah. By far. Like you think it's just all professional artists. No, sir. They, they going to call time. you at 3 a.m. Where you at? Come to the studio. I'm about to, I just left the club. I'm about to hit the studio. As a producer, you got to be like, Yes, sir. Here I come. <laughs> With all your beats and be ready to play them. And then at night, they won't even use none of your beats. That might be a session where they don't even use your beats. So you like, dog. Like, you made me get up. And, and get I'm going to have to do it again the next day. Yeah. So it's a real job. Like, people think producing is easy. Like, I just got to make a beat and I'm good. Nah, bro. So that's why I got so much respect for, like, people like like DJ Khaled, who been doing it for, like, 20 
30 years, the, the real grind, like turntable grind. out to yeah. bring crates to DJ type shit. Like, yeah. bro, it's a real grind. That's tough. That's tough. For sure. Man, Javel, this has been amazing, bro. It's been For a sure. really good podcast. Appreciate you coming. For sure. Um, I've got a lot of gems today. A lot of gems. I just want to say thank you to everybody. Thank y'all for tuning in. You know, follow us on Apple Podcasts, Apple Spotify, follow us on YouTube. Y'all go subscribe. And once again, three-time NBA champion, USA gold medalist, Grammy Award nominee. nominee. Keep getting that. I want to say you the winner. Shit. Me too. No, I said you the winner. Probably. <laughs> but uh, thank you. And uh, that's a wrap. I know, big dog. Yep. Yeah.